Sheba, the son of Batri, a Benjamite, and he blew a trumpet and said, We have no part in David, neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse, every man to his ten, O Israel. So every man of Israel went up from after David and followed this guy, Sheba, the son of Bichri. Um, but the men of Judah clave unto their king from Jordan even to Jerusalem. And David came to his house at Jerusalem, and the king took the ten women, his concubines, whom he had left to keep the house, and put them inward, and fed them, but he went not in unto them, so they were shut up unto the day of their death, living in widowhood. Then said the king to Amasa, Assemble me the men of Judah within three days, and be uh, thou here present. So Amasa went to assemble the men of Judah, but he tarried longer than the set time which he had appointed him. And David said to Abishai, now shall Sheba, the son of Bishri, do us more harm than did Absalom. Take thou thy Lord's servant and pursue after him, lest he get him fence cities and escape us. That's all I want to read. I want to talk to you tonight about preparing for the next disaster. Father, let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Bless the word is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. I could not uh, resist uh, hearing uh, this um, with the present circumstances that our country and our nation is facing. I want to put this word in context, but then I want to talk uh, about uh, some of the issues that our nation has been facing and then um, sort of begin to bend this message um, towards our own personal lives and how should we, how do we prepare for our next disaster? Many of us who are in this room have been through what we could characterize as a disaster, a storm, trouble, uh, 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 a catastrophe in our life. It might have been a health crisis. It might have been the loss of a job. It might have been uh, 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 your heart broken. It might have been the death of a loved one. Crisis uh, takes on many forms, many shapes. And many of us who have lived in the length of time have been through uh, some devastating storms. And it's wonderful to come out of the storm. Thank God there's a silver lining. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God trouble don't last always. Thank God that, amen, there are, there are not only valley, valley experiences, but it takes mountains to make valleys. So yes, life is filled with ups and downs. And life is like a circle. It's a system. It keeps going around and around and around. And some kind of way, we like to think because we have been through a challenge in our lives that we have been through the worst challenge that could ever come and there are no more challenges ahead. And what we do is we fail to prepare for the next disaster. Presently, we, are, uh, we have just, our nation has come out of a, a, a terrible hurricane uh, down in Houston. And uh, we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. But here it is. Uh, we're, we're not even two weeks removed from uh, one of the most devastating hurricanes that have come to our nation in recent years. And, and here we are. Uh, put in a position where we have to prepare again for the next disaster. The news media tells us that there's another storm, and the name Irma. Irma is headed up, headed up through the Caribbean, uh, Puerto Rico, headed towards one of my favorite places, headed towards Florida, telling folk to get out. Y'all got to exit. Y'all got to do something, and you better believe that even though many people lost their lives, lost their possessions, misplaced, displaced, and devastated, some folk Amen. gonna stay right there, 
They won't listen to all the reports. They won't listen to the newscasters. They won't take precaution. Even if they say it's going to slow down, it may not make the impact. Uh, j j just the potential of a disaster, but the potential of a flood, the potential of, of hurricane, a uh, gale force winds, the potential of, of, of debris, the, the, the potential of drowning, the potential of danger. You think that people would move out of the way. They don't, Pastor Lenore, prepare for the next disaster. In the lesson tonight, it, this is a chapter out of the life and times of David. I love it. I love David. I love preaching and teaching about him. I can go on and on and on and on about this guy. But this particular chapter in David's life um, sort of goes, um, it's, it's, it's right in the middle. Uh, in the early stages, he kills Goliath. Um, a little bit later, he's running from King Saul for several years, and then Saul dies. David becomes king. Uh, David uh, is king, and he's conquering all the land around him, and it's good. And then David um, looked at that naked girl, took that man's wife, and slept with her, got her pregnant. <clears throat> got her pregnant, and then killed the man's, uh, killed her husband, and tried to cover it up. And then David went into a season of reaping what he had sown. He had done some bad things. Just because you're a man of God, woman of God, don't you think that you won't reap what you've sown? You know that David repented in Psalm 51. He said, created me a clean heart and renew the right spirit. He did all this wrong. He repented, but he still had to reap what he had sown. He still had to, it, 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 it runs, it goes full circle. Like one more night with the frogs. Uh, well, the scripture tells us that David, David, he reaps it through his son Absalom. Um, he, had this, he had this son, well actually he had a daughter named Tamar and another son named Amnon. Amnon had eyes for Tamar and uh, he actually could have married her if he had gone through the proper channels. But um, he raped her, he forced himself upon her, but she had a brother, his name was Absalom. So Absalom killed Amnon, his brother. So David is reaping all this murder in his life and sexual immorality is being reaped in his children. And his son Absalom, um, he should have had Absalom put to death, eye for an eye. He killed his brother, he was supposed to be sentenced to death, but David didn't kill Absalom. He, he loved his son so much, he didn't kill him. He banished him for a couple of years and then he brought him back but when he brought him back, Karen, he didn't see him. Right. He let him come back into town, but he refused to see him, and it changed his heart. Okay. It changed his attitude about his father, David. Okay. And so rather than be David's ally, he became his enemy. Mm -hmm. And as Absalom, he gets together a whole army, and he comes uh, against David to war against David. And rather than fight Absalom, David retreated. David leaves his throne and he takes all of his whole entourage, his arm and everything, he didn't fight. He could have naturally, uh, Deacon Elsie, David and his regime would have smashed Absalom. Right. But David was sensitive to the fact that he was in the reaping season of his life. He understood he wasn't fighting against his son, he was fighting against God. And nor, hey, hey, what happens when you look more like Goliath than you do yourself? I don't have time to preach this whole thing. What happens when David becomes Goliath? Where David is the big war machine, and now his little son, um, who has done some dirt himself, but his son and his weak army comes against him. David says, this looks like a setup. This looks like... Uh, I'm about to get whipped, not by my son, but by God. Just as I did many years ago, I took out Goliath. I didn't do it. God did it through me. And so David retreats. He leaves and he finds himself in a cave and he writes, as I've taught you, the 23rd Psalm in this lowest time of his life and he goes through a whole time. And then there was a season where the Lord released David to release the army to go and fight because David repented. He, he exemplified the right attitude. Well, I'm telling you, I cannot say enough about having the right attitude 
and the right heart. I mean, there's this passage that, that just really glares in my mind. Um, we hear about um, um, Elijah um, who spoke a word against Ahab and his wife Jezebel. And the Bible says at one point when Ahab got rebuked real strong by Elijah, Ahab repented and God said, you know what? The way his attitude is pleased me. And I know he's wicked and I'm going to judge him, but I'm going to pass his judgment down two or three generations. I'm going to let him live out his days. Even this wicked man Ahab, when he changed his heart, and got the right attitude, the Lord was merciful to him. Well, David, David repents. The Lord was merciful to David, and the Lord allowed um, David and Israel's army to, to actually uh, win this battle against Absalom, and now Absalom is dead. His long, pretty hair, you know, he got caught in a tree, and he's hanging, uh, and they pierce him through, and Absalom is dead, and it's over. Which brings us to our text. They have just escaped devastation. They just come through one revolt. They come through a big onslaught. David's got a big war going on in his family, and everybody's displaced. And this was a disaster. This was a mess. They had just come to it. Now they're just getting back. They just hey, they're just getting back to Zion. Getting everything settled. Water started to. A sage a little bit, you know, die down. And, and then this guy named Sheba says, we ain't following David no more. Right. Right. Later for David. He flips David the bird. Anybody with me? Let's go. And the Bible said the people of Israel, they left David. Don't you ever think that people won't leave you. I know you cute and you handsome and you got all that and you wonderful and you make a mean, you make a mean peanut butter and jelly sandwich. But people will leave you high and dry. They will smile in your face and all the time they want to take your place. Them backstabbers. I'm glad you see you this morning or this afternoon, this evening, David, because I actually want you to share just a little bit of your testimony about what you've been experiencing on your job. I got a place for that, all right? Um, so, 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 this guy Sheba, he festers a revolt against David. And the men of Israel, they left and started following this. Johnny come lately. Nobody know him. This guy ain't killed no, he ain't killed no Goliath. He hasn't slayed a lion and a bear. He's not worshiping. He's not teaching the songs of the Lord. He didn't dance before the ark of the covenant. He, I mean, this, this, they left David for this guy. What was his name again? You don't even remember his name. You see that? The guy's name was Sheba, right? They leave David for Sheba. And so, David says, you know what? We better prepare for the next disaster. Y'all don't have time. I know we just come out of one, but here's some new mess. And you know what? We ain't going to let this be no 10 week, 10 month. This is not going to displace us for the next two years. Let's take care of this in quick fashion. Uh, uh, so he calls the guy a Mesa. Mesa! Get the army together. Get everybody ready to fight. Need y'all to meet me in three days. Timing was key. Well, three days passed. A mesa didn't have the army ready. And this is what they said. This guy, Sheba, is going to do us more harm than Absalom. You know why? Because we didn't prepare for the next disaster. Let me, let me camp now. I'm at my message. I got it now. I, I believe that we as the people of God need to always be watchful. The Bible says watch and pray. And we put a lot of emphasis on prayer, but we don't put too much emphasis on watching where we're not vigilant. 
and, and trouble comes into our life, challenge comes in our life, and, 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 and my God, we escape it by the hair of our chin, chin, chin. I mean, we barely come through some stuff, and right now, right now, uh, uh, some of us is just uh, uh, one, what is it, the one straw from literally having a whole breakdown. One, one thing could show up in your life today and you will have an entire breakdown. It could be financial, it could be emotional, it could be spiritual. Just one little episode can take you all the way out and you barely, nearly made it through the last challenge. And the last challenge you come through hasn't given you no wisdom. After all the hell you've been through, you're no wiser. You still doing the same stuff. You still rob God. You still sporadic in your church attendance and your commitment to the Lord. You still haven't made up your mind you're going to serve the Lord. You still haven't learned how to save money after all you've been through. After all you've been through, you still haven't learned how to pay your bills on time because your credit is important. You mean after all, after that big old disaster you come through, you still, hey man, get involved with the kind of people that are shady characters. After almost going to jail, you still do stupid stuff. You mean... You come through a disaster and you're no wiser today. And you're not preparing for the next disaster. Why? Because they come in waves. They keep on coming. Hey, do you all know this is hurricane season? It's not in some freak event. This is her. If you move to the West Coast out in California, you just need to understand there's certain kinds of insurances that you need to carry because they have earthquakes. This is a part of it. This is how I go here. If you live up north, Chicago, Detroit, you know, up in Michigan, Wisconsin, Ohio, you better have a coat. You ain't got no coat. What do you mean you got no coat? Now you might not be wearing it tonight, but you, hey, it's warming up right now. It's <laughs> it's tuning up right now because we know what's coming. Well, if you live down uh, in the Gulf area and in, in tropical areas, they have tropical storms, and right now is the season. And so um, I, I remember looking at different properties and whatnot in the Florida area, and, and, and during the presentation, they tell us that they have gale force windows on this building. This building is designed to uh, withstand winds up to 200 miles an hour. Say that's how we have to be, because they used to only only build them uh, up to like 120 miles, 130 miles. Well, they had to uh, rethink the thing. Why? Because uh, stones and and twigs, little things, was starting to come through the windows. Like my God, what we supposed to have a gale for? No, you got to get it a little bit more solidified. So 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 they've learned how to prepare. They build the buildings now. They're not built the, the buildings that they built. They they're built to have a little a little sway in them. Because <laughs> they, they found out when they just build a real still, oh, it breaks. So, so they, have, they have taken um, information, data from past experiences and implemented it in the way they build, the way they make roads, the way they have uh, airports, the way they do all that they do. W what is all of this? They're preparing for the next disaster. How does this relate to you? First, let's talk about what's going on in our nation. Jackie, um, Hurricane Harvey. Yeah. Wow. Some of the photos. Hurricane Harvey. Hurricane Harvey, category four storm. Sustained winds, 130 miles per hour. They say it was about nine days of constant rain. Give me some more. Give me some more. Nine days of constant rain. Over 50 inches of rain, which is a record. They say 51 inches. It's a record. It's never been recorded in recorded history in America that much rain. And that much rain fell in six days. They say that in that Houston area, um, uh, uh, in a year, the average rainfall over a year is 46 inches. They got over a year's rainfall in six days. The deaths, over 70 deaths, and that number is still climbing.
They estimate that it's going to cost over $75 billion, billion dollars. You know, it's hard for me to wrap my head around a billion because a million is a thousand thousands. That's a million. And so you've got to have a thousand million to make one billion, a thousand million, a thousand million. 1,000 million, 899 million, 999 million, 1 billion. The disaster is totaled at 75 billion dollars. 72,000, over 72,000 people rescued. 450,000 phone calls to FEMA in the first three days. Half a million phone calls said, help. 215,000 students out of school. Half a million employees displaced. People looking for a place to live. Hospitals underwater. Police force, police station, fire station underwater. School. Underwater, stores, mall, underwater, an entire community. David Leonard, come here. I, I hope you don't mind just sharing a little bit. Uh, this is spontaneous on uh, tonight. Pastor D fired us up. Um, spontaneous. My son David works. Lenore's class, Lenore clapping. She clapping for her son. Amazing. Uh, my son David, he, he's got a, he's, he, he, he does a lot of things, but one of the jobs that he does is he, he's in the call center. Uh, for, uh, is it State Farm? All State. All State, All State Insurance. And, and presently, they're taking uh, many of the calls from the Houston area and people who are being challenged. What have you come across, son? Um, Three-story buildings all the way up underwater. Uh, people stranded in their attics. You had to get relieved by boats. They're um, calling you while they're in their attics yeah, yeah. and water while is rising. Getting, yeah, while they're getting rescues, as the water is rising, they're calling, trying to make their claim and get rescued. Um, we got some families separated. They sent their, mom, their kids and wife ahead and tried to preserve some stuff and got stuck in the attic. Uh, what else? Like he said, the whole police force and fire units are down right now. It was a, a building probably two times this, it's all the way submerged up underwater. Uh, they said some of the staff was still in that building. Uh, what else? I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. You got some people calling, crying, and you can't handle the business so fast because everybody's backed up. You got agents coming in from all different states and across the country, and they can't even keep up with the stuff. Uh, the biggest thing was uh, if we band together, you can work together. That's what the news was saying because the red ants were able to do it, but the humans weren't. The red ants could band together. Yeah, it was over, they said, a billion, a billion ants in pods, and they would make a boat. A raft. And, yeah, and float down. Yep, on, on top of the surface. And... Uh, I mean, you got they 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 figured it out, but we couldn't. So, thank you, son. Clap your hands for my son, Dave. Thank you. Give us them pictures again, Jackie. Uh, Hurricane Harvey, um, again, amazing, devastation. They say that the storm was so bad because it was a slow storm. It, it came up and then it just sat there for six days, seven days, eight days, and it just rained and rained and rained and the water kept rising and rising and rising and rising. It was so funny because uh, I got people around me, I, so if they see a little, two or three drops, they gotta go home and put on their rain boots, you know. They gotta put their little plastic, y'all know how y'all ladies are, you gotta go put your big rain boots on because we got a little water. <laughs> it's amazing. And I was walking, watching the, the news, people getting rescued uh, in their rain boots. Like, yeah, these boots wasn't going to help the day. The point that I'm making today is that it was a tremendous disaster. It has impacted not just that region, but in our, our entire nation. Help is coming from other parts of the world. And here we are two weeks after. Not even two weeks after. 
here comes another storm. And I'm, I'm watching a little bit, and I've I'm, I'm got my ear to the ground, and there is a big push towards preparing for the next disaster. There's another disaster coming. And the thing that, that concerns me is I am sure that there are some people don't pay it no mind. They don't pay it no mind. Here comes Irma, Category 5 storm. <laughs> How can we prepare for the next storm? What did we learn about the last storm that can prepare us for the next storm? Do we have any photos of, of, of Irma? Let, let, let's see. Look, Irma, look at the projections now. They say that Irma is one of, because I think there's another storm coming behind Irma, uh, which says that uh, this, uh, the length of this storm could be up to 400 miles in length. Yeah, when I go to Florida, sometimes I, I, I'll see the sunrise on the East Coast and I will drive about 60 miles to the other side of Florida and see the sun set. Because Florida, the distance of Florida is only about 75 miles in length. The long by, it's only 75 miles from one end to the other end. <laughs> this storm is 400 miles long. And the trajectory, they're suggesting they come right up in the Florida. Pastor D, some people, they don't care. They, they have an ice cream right now. They're going about it right now. Ah, I've been through it before. No big deal. They're not preparing for the next disaster. How do you prepare for the next disaster? What, what would I do? Here's the first thing. Move out of harm's way. If there's any potential for danger to come, then you move out of harm's way. It, it's, like, it's like, oh, I ain't using drugs. Oh, you're just riding in the car with people using drugs. See, see you got to stay out of harm's way. No, I didn't rob the store. Oh, you were just sitting in the car <laughs> and riding in the car with folk that robbed. Come on, TB. You, you got to move yourself out of harm's way. I ain't drinking, I'm just hanging out at the bar. You gotta move yourself. I never will forget the young man said, Bishop, is it all right if, if me and my girl take a bath together? We're not having sex, we're just gonna have a bath. <laughs> I said, Man, you a way better man than I am. If you can have a bath, you gonna have a bath? <laughs> You got to move yourself out of harm's way. I'm trying to preach. Y'all won't help me. How do you prepare for the next disaster? Move yourself out of harm's way. Tell the person next to you, move yourself out of harm's way. That's relative to if you're dealing with people that could bring harm and trouble in your life. That's relative if you're, if you're, if you're, um, you know, uh, Geographically, there I, I'm going to keep it real. I was born and raised down the way, but I try to avoid going down there as much as humanly possible. Especially when I turn on the news and three people got shot on Kinsman, seven people got shot on Shaker, but a bing, but I'm like, you know what? So they, that's, that's a hot area, right? That's hot. I'm going to try to stay out of harm's way. The second thing, Luke chapter 12, verse 33, it says, Sell that ye have and give alms, provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, uh, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupt. Um, Christianity, part of our faith says that the true riches that we have is in our eternal life. That we should not lay up uh, our treasure where moth and rust can corrupt it. Um, there, there is a value in um, our clothing, our, our jewelry, our automobile, our furniture. Uh, but as David testified uh, on the phone call, he said he's a young man. He said he sent the kids and sent the wife. Y'all go on out and get away. I'm going to go in here and try to see if I can save some stuff. It ain't worth it. You want to save the couch? You, that old couch, you don't even like that couch. 
It's already wet. And now they tell me that that whole area is infested. They're afraid that an infestation of, 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 of mosquitoes. And they say that the water is toxic now. Poisonous. Oh my God. And you trying to save some stuff. What are you trying to say? That ain't worth saving. What are you holding on to? What are you, who, who, who you holding on to? What stuff you can, I mean, you aren't preparing for the next disaster. There's another disaster coming. And there you are trying to save stuff that ain't worth saving. How do you prepare for the next disaster? You, disaster, you save yourself. Move out of harm's way. Put your treasure in spiritual things. Know what's really important in life. Relationships are the most important thing that we have. Never forget that. People are God's greatest commodity. People. Not stuff. Not things. That stuff can be replaced. But people. People that love you. People that you love. That's the most important thing in the world. And finally, save yourself. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose your soul? How do you prepare for the next disaster? There's a disaster that keeps on reoccurring. It's called death. Big mama died. Your cousin died. Sister died. Everybody. And hey, what are you doing to prepare for the next disaster? Because the next disaster might be you. It might be your time. And what are you doing to prepare for that? Oh, no, not me. Not you. You just like people in Florida right now. And there's a projector that's saying it's coming this way. Me? Death? Me? Nah, not me. Not you. If not you, you will be the only one. Because death comes to us all. And it is a disaster. What are you doing to prepare for your death? Do you have your will? Do you have instructions for your family? Do you have a pastor? I don't like when people call me. They want me to bury this one. I don't this. Amen. Somebody in this room do hair. How about somebody call you and say, would you do my sister's hair? Because you do mine. I want you to do my sister's hair. <laughs> you want to say, no, your, your sister need to pay. If she pay, I do her hair. No, 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 I pay. Well, your pay is for you. Your commitment is for you. Not for everybody else. I better get out of here before I prepare for the next disaster. <laughs> Saints of God, I think this is a powerful moment to consider um, not only death, uh, but our lives and the decisions that we make, mistakes that we've uh, made, even just challenges that come. These hurricanes that we have referenced on tonight, they are natural disasters. They are things that are beyond um, a person's control. And certainly in all of our lives, there are things that show up that are beyond our control. It's not our fault. It's not a result of sin. It's the cycle. It's the system. It just goes around. That's how it does. And what do you do to prepare? You know, just life happens to everyone. I don't know why Christians always whine and cry. Listen, life happens to everybody. Everybody needs some tires on their car. Everybody's car break down. Everybody have an uh, unexpected bill. Everybody has stuff that come. But in the believer's life, it's the devil. It's not the devil. It's life. Life happens to us all. All humans. Hey Amen. Well, I ain't going to say every one of them, but a lot of people get their heart broke. A lot of people get taken advantage of. A lot of people get stuff done. Not fair. It's just not not fair. Young man called a touchdown the other day and they said, it ain't a touchdown. And the only thing I could take from it was, you know, it's good that he understands that life sometimes is just not fair. I'm not glad that this bad thing happened, but it's just not fair. And in some kind of way, it prepares him to understand sometimes 
Stuff don't go your way. It ain't the devil. It ain't because you didn't fast or pray. It, that's just how it go. And what you have to do is prepare for the next disaster. Come on, clap your hands for the word of the Lord. Clap your hands for the good word of God. God's word is good. As you're standing to your feet, the story concludes King David, the boy Sheba, he ran to a fenced city. And Joab, hey, first, first thing Joab did, who was David's right-hand man, Deacon L.C., was he killed Amasa, the guy that was running late, took him too long to get the army together. Joab took him out. And the next thing he did, Paula, was they found this guy, Sheba, in a fenced city. And they started to tear the whole city apart. And there was a wise woman, looked over the wall, said, what, what y'all doing? You trying to tell the city that what we have done? We ain't done nothing. He said, uh, Sheba, the guy Sheba that came against David is in the town. The woman said, give me one minute. She went in the city. This is only for Bible readers. Found him and cut his head off and threw it over the wall. Is this the guy you're looking for? <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that looked like it. I know his face from somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, next thing you know, the threat was thwarted, but it was, it was deterred because they, they responded quickly. It was a bad tragedy, but doing, when the potential of the next one, they responded quickly and were able to come out of that situation. And I think that's what the Lord is saying. You know, let's look at what we have come through, look at some of the challenges, and uh, let's make some adjustments. Make the adjustments that you need to make. Be prepared for the next disaster. Father, I thank you now. We do lift up a special prayer for those that are in Houston, those that are in the Caribbean islands, those that are being affected by natural disasters all over these United States and the world. Have mercy. Give them wisdom. And inspire others like us to help where we and where they can. More importantly, Lord, I pray that we would be sober-minded, vigilant, and watchful. Watchful. Truly preparing ourselves for the next disaster. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You all can be seated tonight in the presence of the Lord. I want to say a few words to our uh, viewing audience and dismiss them, and then we'll receive the Lord's offering. I'm going to give you all some some good information, and uh, we'll be dismissed tonight. I want to thank you all for tuning in. For those of you all that are watching by way of the Internet, I hope that you have enjoyed tonight's broadcast, and I hope that you are preparing for the next disaster. Would you navigate on your screen? If you have to go to our website, do just that. Go to BACA, B-O-C-A, and release a seed, uh, offering a tithe, a special gift unto the Lord. Bless, amen, this ministry as this ministry is being a blessing to you. We hope to see you next time. Until then, peace to the family. Come on, clap your hands for our viewing audience. God bless you. All right. It's our time now. Whose time is it? B-O-C-A. Well, praise the Lord. Once again, I'm Bishop Eric Kincaid Clark, and I certainly pray that this message has blessed you, strengthened you, and encourage you in your walk with God. I would like for you to sow a seed, a tithe, or a special offering into the work of God as we here at the Body of Christ Assembly are a church in the city impacting the world. We're doing the work of God and we do desire you to partner with us as we go forth and accomplish our Father's work. Until next time, peace to the family. So just open